we are going to give this another go. Let's see what happens. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it doesn't work, then we'll just circle back around and pretend like it worked. And if I have to upload a file, I have to upload a file. Anyway, as the title of the video says, I'm not perfect. Good evening. Welcome to Five Day with Jay. I'm your host, Jay R. Murdoch. I'm tired of making a mouse with the stream. I started and stopped it like five, six times. It still does not say that I'm streaming, which is frustrating. So if it is streaming and you're seeing it, awesome. If it's not streaming and you don't see it, it's going to get recorded. I'll get it uploaded. It will just take a little bit longer, which will frustrate me because I can't figure out why it's not currently functioning. Anyway, good evening. Thank you for joining me. I'm so glad that you're here. Again, as it says in the title, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not a tech tard by any means, as many self-proclaimed authors I know are resistant to technology. My current boss is, he's not so much resistant to technology as much as, hey, things are changing too fast, I don't like this, slow this all down. I get it, I get it. Technology can be imposing, it can be frustrating, and there's things that you need to deal with. As we said yesterday, you, you learn to adapt, you learn to figure this stuff out and you move on. It's what you do. So that's what we're doing. We're just going to move on. We're going to continue recording as if we're streaming and have a good time with it. I make a lot of mistakes from day to day. I, it's, it's, it's why I got a paper brain that sits next to my computer. I, I need to write stuff down. If I don't, I'm going to forget it. If I don't keep track of what I need to do, I will forget it. If I don't keep a checklist, I will forget something. If you send me to the grocery store and give me three items, I will likely remember all three of those items. You give me four, you're going to get three. I will forget one of them. Guaranteed. That's the way my brain works. I've tried memory programs before. You know, that guy. I've tried mnemonics. I've tried, oh, I'll just remember the first letter of each one and make a word out of it. I, I've tried, trust me, I've tried different memory techniques. Certain things stick in my brain. Certain things do not. Like foreign languages. Foreign languages, I've tried. I really have. I've tried hard learning foreign languages. They don't stick in my brain. I can understand some Spanish now that I've been around it for so long, but I'm not fluent. I, I've, I've taken three, four years of Spanish, and that's why I can understand some of it, but I'm not... I, I don't communicate in Spanish well. I, I, I do try. I um, I can hold a basic conversation about a, you know, six-year-old level, and that's that's pushing it. Other things stick in my head that I just, I cannot explain. A lot of the math that I learned in high school, mathematical formulas, these things stick in my brain. Uh, I had... Something about math, they stick in my head. Song lyrics. You play a song for me once. If it's not some screaming death metal that you can't understand the lyrics without focusing intently on it, it if it's a regular song, I, I'm going to end up remembering the lyrics. They're going to stick in my head. That, that's the way my brain works. Like I can't help it. But that's... Everyone's brain is different. Everyone has different ways that their brains function. I know my limits, my, my capabilities, and I've had to learn to accept those capabilities and just move past them and understand that there's limits to what I can and cannot do, both mentally and physically. But let's deal with mental today. We'll deal with physical another day. You guys, if you've watched this feed for any time, you know my background. Mentally, when I'm working on a story, it's very easy for me to get lightning, lightning, laser focused on a story when I'm working on it. And I will begin writing and I will lose track of what, what I'm doing and how it's going. I will be very intense when I'm working on it. That said, it's also very easy for me to fall out of a story and try and force a story to go somewhere that it the story's not going. 
the other day I mentioned I was working on Giant Robot Planetary Competition Book 3, and I deleted a lot of words and wrote a bunch more words. It's, it's just how it goes. That's how my brain works. Sometimes my brain needs to go down a path the wrong way, realize I was going the wrong way, do a U-turn, go back to where I should have been, and start over again. If you've ever been on a road trip with me, I said this before, no road trip is complete without at least one U-turn. That's just, the, that's the way I am. Whenever we go somewhere, if it's something where we have, haven't been to before, I'll make a U-turn. If it's somewhere we have been before, chances are I will still end up making a U-turn. Just, I used to get frustrated with myself the missus used to get frustrated with me. Now we just accept it. And it's, it's a running joke. It's, it really is. It's, it's not anything to get stressed out about. If we're on a trip going somewhere, fine. If we're running late somewhere, well, it's not going to suddenly make us be on time just because I didn't have to make a U-turn. So we accept these things. With my writing, I've learned to accept my failings to a degree, but I've also pushed myself to spot those failings as early as possible to continue moving forward with my writing. I don't want to get deep into a book. One book I wrote that I was working on was called To Fall From The Sky. It was an interesting story to me at the time. And by the time I got about halfway through the book, I realized I had no idea where the heck I was going with that story. Yes, I was writing into the dark, I like the characters, and I probably need to delete about half of what I wrote, which would probably be about twenty-five or 30,000 words. It just chop that off and go, okay, I was really heading in the wrong direction. I know how the story ends. I know exactly how the story ends. But I needed to give myself that time to write that story. It was going to be another story first in a series type of book when I was working on it. I still may go back and visit that one sometime and I might finish it off. Uh, the Bassist. I know The Bassist. I need to delete a good chunk out of that one because I'm probably about twenty five or 30,000 words into that one. And yeah, I, I kind of goofed up uh, in the middle of those words. Not in the middle of the book, but in the middle of what I had written. And I know I need to go clean that out and fix it. I'm not a base technician, and I tried to include some very, very specific details about what guitar techs and bass techs and drum techs do. That was one of the things I wanted to do with that book, was get kind of a behind-the-scenes look at what the characters do. The main characters are not the ones that are up on the stage. The main characters are the ones that are behind the stage. They're the ones that are more the focus. Yes, the characters that are on the stage play a big role in what happens. It's a band. It's a it's it's about a band that's traveling the solar system, putting on a rock show, putting on a heavy metal show. But I know now where I goofed up, why I goofed up, and how to correct it. Being perfect when I write a first draft isn't my goal. Do I want it to be clean? Yes. Do I want it to be consistent? Absolutely. And that's the biggest challenge when I'm writing is to make sure that something is internally consistent. I'm not to the point in my career where I can just sit down, write a clean copy, start to finish. Yes, I understand there are a lot of writers that they go through, they'll write a chapter, two chapters, whatnot, in a given day. The next day when they start writing, they'll go through and they'll read through that and clean it up as they go and then write the next chapter or two. I'm not at that stage in my writing yet. Yes, I do go back and I reread and keep moving forward and I do something very similar to what they do. But I will get on a track as I'm writing. Like I said, I'll get laser focused on that direction. That direction might not be the right direction. Might need to course correct slightly. Come back a little bit. These are the things that I'm working on. This is why I'm doing these pop-ups and other courses through Dean Wesley Smith's site because there's so much information in there. This is somebody who has a career who's written over 200 novels. 
this is somebody that I can learn a lot from. It's like with the bass practice. I'm a member of Scott's bass lessons. Why? I am not a great bass player. I'm adequate. I can learn a song. I can, and by learn a song, I don't mean I'm going to go start playing roundabout or start doing some Jaco Pastorius out here. It's not one of the, I'm talking, you know, give me some Def Leppard, give me some, you know, Metallica is even challenging. Um, it's, it's, go you know, look at some of the bass tabs. They're not that easy. I can learn some simpler songs. Foo Fighters, Tom Petty, Dire Straits. I can play stuff like that. Some old time rock and roll. As soon as we get into some walking bass lines, okay, slow down. I, I need to focus a little bit more. At any rate, what I'm saying is, I know my failings. I know where I need to work on my failings and how to work on them. And that's what I do. You go back and read V&A Shipping, you will find issues with the book. Guaranteed. Some of the characters are a little bit flat. Uh, the female character comes off as your typical female. This was written at a completely different time in my life. v &A Shipping was written oh, 15 years ago or better. I was a completely different person 15 years ago. The world was a completely different place 15 years ago. And the character made sense to me at the time. The character, as you read v &A Shipping 2, is a little bit more advanced. v &A Shipping 3, she really comes into her own. This is because I matured as a person, therefore my characters and my writing matured. Nothing you can do about that. I get that a lot of people who write books are younger, and it's what you write when you're younger is representative of where you're at in that stage in your life. v &A shipping very much is representative of where I was at that point in my life and how I thought, how I functioned. Doesn't mean I can't change and become better. Just, yes, I made mistakes with that book, but I'm not going to go back and rewrite that book. It's been out there for years. A lot of people enjoy that book. There's a lot of things about that book that I feel are really good and worthwhile. One mistake I made right now is I forgot to grab some water to make sure I was staying hydrated. Pardon me. But what I'm saying is, if you are having issues with your writing, by no means am I a professional writer, am I not giving writing advice, all I'm saying is sometimes you need to take a step back from what you're doing and focus yourself a little better on what you're doing. Don't beat yourself up because something isn't perfect. That's all I'm saying. And that's kind of where I'm going with, with my writing. I know I make mistakes. I know I have made mistakes. Correct them and move on. That's what I'm doing. At any rate, speaking of getting some writing done, I'm going to go take care of that. This has been 5 a Day with Jay. I've been Jay. You've been awesome.